Recap in minutes, in today's video, we will be enjoying an action drama thriller film, entitled The Contractor. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with James Harper, a member of the Army's Special Operations Forces. James has been rehabilitating and recovering from a debilitating knee injury while fighting in Afghanistan. He lives happily with his wife, Brianne, and their 8-year-old son Mike Jr., who he loves very much. That night, he's busy dealing with their bills when he gets a message from his teammate. He tells him their new commanding officer, Lt. Col. Roberts, will be testing their whole team. A few days later, James is called to meet with Roberts. He reads James's medical records and says his blood work reveals the use of illegal steroids. Roberts immediately tells him he'll leave the army with an honorable discharge but will lose his benefits, including his pension and health care. Although James finds it hard to leave the military, he can't do anything to keep the job. When James gets home, he tells his wife the bad news, but he accepts it as the consequence of his actions. He looks distraught because he doesn't have enough savings to support them for the next few months, especially when they have a lot of bills to pay. But Brienne tries to calm him down, reassuring him that everything will be fine and they will find a solution together. He offers to get a job in private contracting, but she reminds him of his promise long ago not to. One night, when James is repairing the roof of the house, Brienne tells him that his best friend, Mason, has died as a result of ending his own life. Mason was James's best friend in the military unit, who had also been laid off like him a few months earlier. Brienne becomes very worried and afraid that he'll do the same. He immediately hugs her and assures her that he'll never leave his family, especially during difficult times. The next day, when James attends Mason's funeral, a man named Mike approaches him. They joke lightheartedly about Mason, and seeing his moody demeanor, Mike invites him to his house for dinner with his family. Mike is his former superior in the Special Forces military unit, who left the military after he got fired for the same reasons as him. However, their relationship is still good, so Mike invites him over. Later, James comes to Mike's house, and after dinner, they watch a football game while they catch up about their respective lives. Mike shares that he works in a private company with higher pay. Hearing this, James asks for help to let him join the company because, at this time, he still has yet to find a new job. Mike immediately tells him yes, and he'll set up a meeting with his employer. The next day, Mike brings James to a ranch where Rusty, the organization's boss, is staying. James sees an open file of him on the table and inquiries about it. He talks about how they gave everything to the military, mind, body, and spirit, but they just chewed them up and spat them out in return. He later realizes that Rusty used to be a military member who decided to leave and build his own company. Before hiring James, Rusty told him that most of the missions of this job are dangerous and have a very high risk. With his current financial condition, James has no choice but to take the job and accept all the possible risks. He also says that all missions from his company receive permission and direct support from the government. So James doesn't have to worry about being arrested for carrying out the task later. He also writes a 50,000 check to James to keep his family afloat. After James officially agrees to join, Rusty gives him his first mission, to go to Berlin for a few weeks to deal with a situation threatening their national security. When he returns home, James informs Brienne that he has got a new job that pays quite well, but the job requires him to go abroad for about two weeks, and she reluctantly allows him to go. The next day, James goes to Berlin by plane and stays in a hotel that Mike has been accommodating. A few hours after arriving at the hotel, someone knocks on the door, and they exchange a code to prove to each other they're one of Rusty's men. Later, a woman named Katya enters his room and orders him to spy on a biological scientist named Salim. She says that Salim is known to have cooperated with terrorist organizations to develop biological weapons. After preparing all the equipment needed in the evening, James immediately goes on his first mission. He documents all of Salim's activities at home and in the laboratory where Salim conducts research. After a few days of tracking Salim's movements and gathering all the information needed, he gets a message from Katya to go to their safe house. At their safe house, James meets with Mike, Katya, and one of their other colleagues named Bobby. Mike explains that Salim is creating a highly lethal biological weapon to sell to infamous terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda. Their objective is to assassinate Salim and take all his lab-based research materials related to the biological weapon. However, they must take precautions because the laboratory has a security system that connects to a local police station. As a backup plan, in case they were surrounded by the Berlin police, they could run into the forest and through the river tunnels. After arriving at the location, James and the team sneaks in and knock down the guards one by one. They brought one of the guards with them to break into the laboratory building. 
After checking the rooms, they finally find Salim and knock him out. As soon he gains consciousness, they immediately threaten him to hand over all his research and backup data. Mike then orders Bobby to transfer all the data to their computer while James is assigned to kill Salim. Salim begs James not to kill him because he's just a scientist trying to save the lives of millions of people through his research. He asks James to help secure a copy of his research data in a safety deposit box in a bank. However, James doesn't believe his words and kills him using a lethal chemical injection. After killing him, James sets fire to the laboratory and places his body as if he has died in an accident. But as they were about to leave the lab, two police cars surrounded them, causing a shootout between them and the police. Unfortunately, Bobby dies during the shootout, and as more police cars arrive, Mike suffers a gunshot wound to the leg. The police capture Katya, leading Mike to order James to kill her, and he does. Knowing the situation is worsening, the police chase after them. At the same time, James carries Mike and takes him to the forest so they can hide in the nearby river storm drain. Mike and James rest briefly in a safe location while James treats the gunshot wound to Mike's leg. Mike insists on securing the mission first, and he has to deliver the laptop. He's losing a lot of blood and is now in critical condition, leading James to do a blood transfusion. After Mike recovers, they plan to return to base immediately. However, James' knee injury reoccurs, giving him severe pain and making it difficult to stand. He advises Mike to go ahead and hand over the research data to Rusty. For the sake of the success of their mission, Mike has no choice but to leave James and go to Rusty first to hand over the data. Before he leaves, Mike orders James to go to a hotel called Salvina and wait until he returns to pick him up. James gets out of the storm to drain a few hours later when his knee pain subsides, and he covers himself in mud to cover his scent. He then grabs water and food from a pickup truck that he sees. That night, James goes to the Salvina Hotel as per Mike's earlier instructions. In the room, James finds a passport that Mike has given him beforehand and a message saying he'll come back at 10 and instructing him to take two pills every six hours. But after waiting a long time, Mike still hasn't arrived, and James feels like something is wrong so he decides to leave the hotel. James then calls Rusty on a burner phone to ask about Mike's whereabouts, and Rusty says that their mission got leaked and some police are starting to hunt them down. He says that Mike never returned to submit the research data, so he assumes that Mike died on the way. Rusty then orders James to tell him his location so he can send some people to pick him up. But after seeing the people Rusty sent, James has a bad feeling and decides not to go with Rusty's men because he thinks that Rusty is the one who killed Mike. Shortly after James goes the other way, Rusty angrily orders his men to arrest and kill James. After avoiding several bullet shots, James runs to save himself from Rusty's men. After a fierce chase, he escapes under the bridge aisle and into the tunnels while two of Rusty's men follow him. James manages to kill one of them, but before the other man dies, James asks him who sent them and finds out that Rusty has sent them to kill him upon pickup, which they did to Mike. Later, James sends a short message to Rusty through the man's cell phone so that Rusty thinks he's dead. After a long and tiring journey, James rests in the underground station while thinking about his next plan. At that moment, he suddenly remembers Salim's words, the copy of the research data he has hidden in the safety deposit box. The next day, James goes to Salim's house and asks Salim's wife, Sylvie, to take a copy of the research data from the bank. At first, Sylvie refuses his request, but after he threatens to harm her son, she has no choice but to obey his orders and bring him. Shortly after, they retrieve the data from the bank, and then Sylvie hands an iPad with Salim's research on it to James. After unlocking it with the cooperation of Sylvie, he leaves the two of them. He calls for someone on a payphone, who gives him the location of a safe pickup point. Later, he meets with the person he called, a man named Virgil arrives, and as soon as James gets in the vehicle, he's tranquilized and awakens, cuffed on a bed in the safe house. Virgil explains that James's knee was infected and that while he was unconscious, he treated it. James wants to go home, but Virgil explains he can't. That night, James plays a video of Salim explaining that he's working on a successful H5N1 vaccine formula and intends to provide it for free. Still, some parties plan to snatch the vaccine formulation from him for personal gain. When Virgin and James are eating dinner, Rusty's men attack, causing Virgil's death. However, James escapes, setting off a booby trap for Rusty's team. Soon, James returns to America using the passport that Mike gave him earlier. Arriving in America, James goes to Mike's house to tell Mike's wife that he's dead. But unexpectedly, it turns out that Mike is still alive, making James think he has conspired with Rusty to kill him. The next morning, 
James secretly follows Mike behind to discover his plans. But apparently, Mike realizes this, so he immediately ambushes the people following him. When he finds out it's James, Mike looks surprised because he got news from Rusty that he's dead. He says he didn't pick him up at the hotel because he never intended to betray James. On the other hand, James almost kills Mike, who lies to him about the mission and the research carried out by Salim. Mike advises James not to return home because if Rusty finds out that he's alive, his family will be in danger. Hearing this, James decides to kill Rusty and his men because it's the only way to solve all this. That evening, Mike goes to see Rusty, while James sneaks into Rusty's house through the back door. Then, they start shooting all of Rusty's men until a fierce shootout ensues. After all of Rusty's men is dead, Mike and Rusty shoot at each other. James manages to kill Rusty but not before Rusty mortally wounds Mike. He rushes to take Mike to the hospital and save him, but he dies due to severe injuries. The following day, he burns Mike in his car to eliminate the trail before returning to his house to meet his family. The movie ends with James reuniting with his family, wherein he intends to take his wife and son to leave America and start a new life. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.